Did you really pay $300 for this little bottle? This is a $12 bottle of herbicide, and this is a $300 bottle of herbicide. Please don't tell me you spent that much on this. When it comes to weed colors, do you really get what you pay for? Today, we're gonna paint some lines in the grass, test out each one of these, and see which one does better. Let's do this. Now, most people associate weed killers with herbicides like this, but the reality is there are just some weeds that these won't control, which is where a guy like this comes into play. This is Pilex, and it costs $300 for this little four ounce bottle. But why in the world would somebody want to spend such a large amount of money for a little bottle of weed killer? First, we have to take a look at exactly what it is. Pilex is an HPPD inhibitor. Now, I'm not a scientist, so I'm not going to act like I know exactly what that means. But essentially what it is, is it prevents photosynthesis in the weeds, which result in them bleaching out and then they die. Now, if that sounds familiar to another popular herbicide on the market, that's because it is. This is Tenacity, and it's also an HPPD inhibitor, just like Pilot. And for some of you guys that might be new to lawn care, Tenacity is a very popular herbicide in the lawn care community, and it's been praised as one of the only herbicides that you could use while seeding new grass. Now, both of these herbicides are listed to control a wide variety of weeds, but there are two weeds in particular that Pilex controls that sets it apart from every single herbicide on the market. Now, the first weed that does an excellent job at controlling is goosegrass and anybody who's had a goosegrass infestation knows just how hard it could be to control it and when it comes to controlling it there's nothing on the market that does it better than pilot the second weed that it does an excellent job controlling is bermuda grass and cool season lawn now this is going to come really handy for all the people that live in the transition zone and have fescue lawns and kentucky bluegrass lawns and they're starting to have bermuda creeping into there pilex is going to do a great job killing it and also it goes without saying now that we're on the topic Pilex is only for cool season lawns, not for warm season. So you're probably asking yourself right now, which one of these weeds am I trying to control? Well, the short answer is none of them. Since Pilex is also listed to kill a wide variety of grassy and broadleaf weeds, I'm gonna be testing out its use on a more broad spectrum. Now I understand spending $300 on it to use it as a general purpose herbicide is a little bit overkill. However, I do have some tough to control grassy weeds back there that no matter what I apply to it, it seems like they don't go away. So I'm actually really excited to see what it does to it. This is my backyard and it hasn't been treated for weeds this season or last season. No pre-emergent, no post-emergent, nada but luckily for us we have a full-blown salad bar back here that needs to be taken care of so not only are we going to test out pilex today we're also going to test out this 12 dollar bottle of biovents i got at my local home depot it's a three-way herbicide it's supposed to kill both grassy weeds and broadleaf weeds is it possible this 12 dollar herbicide does a better job than a 300 dollar bottle of herbicide let's find out so we're going to paint off two sections of the lawn 500 square feet each and in one plot, we're gonna test the Pilex alone. And in the other plot, we're gonna apply the $12 BioAdvanced. And the top part of the lawn is gonna act as our control so we can compare our results. All right guys, so the first area we're gonna be spraying is section A over here with just the Pilex. It's also important to know anytime that you spray Pilex, you have to add either a crop oil or a methylated seed oil to the mix to act as a surfactant. And the reason being is that the weeds that it specifically targets like crabgrass and goosegrass, it has really waxy outer layers of the leaves. And that crop oil really helps the herbicide stick to the leaves of the weeds rather than just roll right off. Also keep in mind, it is not recommended to use a regular non-ionic surfactant like most of you guys might be used to with some of your herbicide applications. And that's because the seed oil does a much better job sticking to those waxy leaves. All right, so now that we got the Pilex down, we're gonna go ahead and apply the $12 BioAdvanced herbicide. And what's cool about this weed killer is it's a three-way herbicide, which means it's gonna act on both grassy weeds and broadleaf weeds. And judging by the look of my lawn, there's a whole bunch of dandelions back here. So I know it's gonna do a good job or theoretically should do a good job killing them. Hey. 
Hi guys, so it's been a week. We're over here in plot A right now where we just sprayed the Pilex. And if you take a look at these grassy weeds down here, you can see it did a great job bleaching it out. I'm not exactly sure what weeds these are. But the thing about grassy weeds are sometimes you won't even know you have them until you treat for them because they can hide in plain sight. It's very clear that we have some kind of invasive grass over here growing. Now let's take a look at the broadleaf weeds. It did a really good job killing these broadleaf weeds I have. This is a dandelion right here. You could see that it's bleached out and it looks like it's dead. I'm pretty confident that once we mow this a time or two, it's gonna disappear and it's gonna be completely gone. All right, so we're over here in plot B, which is the bio advanced plot. And if you take a look down here, you could see it did a good job on these broadleaf weeds right here. These are dandelions and it looks like, you know, there's a little bit of green left to them, but it looks like it definitely did some damage to them. So over time, once I mow this a few times, we'll see if they start to disappear. And if not, I'll make sure I do a second application. So when it comes to broadleaf weeds, the Bio Advance did a decent job putting a dent in it. But I'm taking a look around here at Plot B and I don't see any damage to any grassy weeds. So if you take a look around the base of this tree right here, you can see there's a bunch of grassy weeds surrounding it. And I made sure to spray those really good with the Bio Advance but I don't see any damage done to it. So once this experiment is all done, I'm gonna go ahead and broadcast spray Pilex across my whole lawn and see if it does any damage to any of these other invasive grasses that we have. If you guys wanna see the results, make sure you guys follow me on Instagram because I'll be posting them there. So what do I think about these herbicides? Well, they both did a decent job killing broadleaf weeds. I would say that the Pilex did a little bit better job than the Bio Advance, but that doesn't mean you should go run out, spend $300 on a bottle just to kill broadleaf weeds in your lawn because there are other much cheaper options out there like speed zone and t-zone that will only cost you about 30 dollars a bottle and they will do a much better job than either of these herbicides at killing things like dandelions and thistle now when it comes to the grassy weeds the bio advance did a terrible job in plot b i didn't see any damage to any grassy weeds but this is where pilex shines it did an amazing job killing the grassy weeds in my lawn so if you have some tough to control grassy weeds and you tried other cheaper options like quinclorac and you haven't had that much success with it, then I think Pilex may be a good option for you. But we're also going to test out a herbicide combination that is dubbed by most turf grass professionals as the absolute best way to kill crabgrass in a lawn. And that combination is nicknamed the Pile Driver, which is a combination of Pilex and Quinclorac. Quinclorac. Quin